Now let us move on to January 2008. Part 1 says a sample of Q is heated in a dry test tube. A glowing splint is placed into the heated test tube containing sample of Q, a sample of Q. The gases evolved upon heating are bubbled through lime water. These are the observations. The solid turns yellow when hot and white when cold. Hmm. A gas which relights a glowing splint evolves. A gas which forms a white precipitate with lime water evolves. So what can we infer from these observations? From this observation then for the first one the solid turns yellow when hot and white when cold this means that there is a zinc compound a zinc compound is suspected zn2 plus is suspected A gas which relights a glowing splint evolves. Oxygen was produced. Oxygen gas was produced. The next part, a gas which forms a white precipitate with lime water evolves. Carbon dioxide is the gas that turn lime water milky or cloudy cloudy so carbon dioxide gas was produced okay all right if carbon dioxide gas was produced this means that carbonate ion is suspected Okay. Part 2 to the solid remaining in after heating excess dilute nitric acid. The mixture is boiled, then filtered, and the filtrate divided into two equal portions. Alright, so let us see what those two equal portions are saying. To one portion of the filtrate from two above. Aqueous sodium hydroxide is added until in excess. So remember, sometimes they, they, your, exam, your examiner will say it is added dropwise. Sometimes they will say it is added until in excess. So you should know that uh, in both scenarios, sodium hydroxide is added dropwise first, and then it is added drop, um, and then it is added in excess after. Okay, because that's how they are administered dropwise first and then in excess. The observation is that a white precipitate is formed, and the other part of the observation stated that the precipitate is soluble in excess aqueous sodium hydroxide. Alright, so let us see a why if a white precipitate is formed from dropwise sodium hydroxide, it simply means that these ions are present. You would have the aluminum 3 plus ion, the Zn2 plus ion, the Pb2 plus ion, and the calcium 2 plus ions. And those are present. However, the other part of the observation stated that the precipitate is soluble in excess. Of these four ions, only zinc is soluble in excess sodium hydroxide. So zinc, zinc 2 plus ion sorry, of these two, uh, aluminum, zinc and um, I was thinking about ammonia, the, the, the question that follow, aluminum, zinc and lead are the ones present in excess sodium hydroxide not calcium i was thinking about ammonia i'm thinking about zinc 
part four, the other portion, the filtrate from of the filtrate above, aqueous ammonia is added until in excess. A white precipitate is formed. If I drop wise, so drop wise using aqueous ammonia, zinc two plus, aluminum three plus. Let me use a different color. So you would have zinc 2 plus, aluminum 3 plus, and lead 2 plus present. So those are the ions present dropwise in aqueous ammonia. In excess ammonia, of these three, only zinc is soluble in excess ammonia. So zinc ion is confirmed. And it makes sense because right here in the in part I we suspected zinc and down here we confirmed zinc okay part four five part five copper turnings are added to a sample of solid Q followed by a few drops of concentrated sulfuric acid then from that we know that the brown fumes evolve and a blue solution is formed so from the from the brown fumes we know that the nitrogen dioxide gas was produced and if the nitrogen dioxide gas was produced it simply means that you the nitrate ions are suspected the nitrate ions Nitrate ions are suspected. Ions are suspected. And the solution, the blue solution form is due to the copper sulfate uh, being produced there. Okay? The next part May June 2008 just look at me January 2008 now it's May June 2008 a student conducts a number of tests on an aqueous solution of compound X the observations made are recorded in table 2 below complete table 2 by filling by filling in the inferences that could be made based on the observation recorded. The first part, to a sample of solution X, dilute nitric acid is added, followed by a few drops of silver nitrate. Again, silver nitrate, dilute acid. We know what we're testing for there. Should be testing for the halides. And the observation said that a white precipitate was formed. That white precipitate definitely belongs to the chloride ion. So the chloride ion is present based on the white precipitate. And it says that it turns grayish black, gray black in, uh, in light, which turns gray black in light. Okay. And the ionic equation that we're looking for is the is between the chloride ion and the silver ions so that silver from the silver nitrate silver ion plus all nitrates are soluble so we expect silver the silver ion to be in the aqueous form and the chloride ion should also be in the aqueous form and that produced a ppt of silver chloride solid remember all ppt are given a solid symbol the state symbols are solid and this equation is balanced so that's the ionic equation for the formation of silver chloride which is the white ppt that was observed to a sample of solution of x aqueous sodium hydroxide is added until excess 
Once we added the aqueous sodium hydroxide, a pale blue gelatinous pre precipitate is formed, which is insolubly in excess. So drop-wise, we know that the copper 2+, plus, let me change its color and use blue for copper since copper is blue. Copper 2 plus ion is present when it is when it when it was administered dropwise, and then copper 2 plus ion is confirmed when it was administered in excess. Okay. To a sample of a solution of X, that's the third part, a few drops of acidified aqueous potassium permanganate solution are added and the solution heated. The potassium permanganate solution is decolorized. So what would decolorize potassium permanganate? Sulfur dioxide was produced. And if sulfur dioxide was produced, it means that the sulfate, sorry, the sulfite ion is suspected. Okay. To the final part of this section, to a sample of solution of X, a few drops of barium chloride solution followed by dilute hydrochloric acid are added. A white PPT form from the barium chloride so remember uh, to test for sulfur you can either use barium chloride or the barium barium nitrate right both could be used to test for the sulfate ions okay so here we would write the sulfate ion is present And then the precipitate would dissolve in an acid. I'm not sure about this acid right here because sulfate ions, well, barium sulfate, which is the precipitate, is insoluble, highly insoluble in, in, in hydrochloric acid. So I'm not sure if they are referring to the hydrochloric acid here because the precipitate would not dissolve in, in hydrochloric acid. And however, it is slightly, partially soluble in. In, 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 in the other acid particularly uh, nitric acid and sulfuric acid in their in great concentration so I, I'm not sure about the hydrochloric acid right here but nonetheless um, we can go ahead and say that the sulfide the sulfate ion is confirmed Okay. All right, moving on to the next question. All right, so we are on to June 2009. A student conducts the following test on a solid R and makes the observation recorded in table 2. Complete table 2 to show all the possible inferences and write the ionic equation where indicated. A portion of R is dissolved in approximately 6 cm cubes of water. The resulting solution is divided into two equal portions for test 1 and 2. The observation is that a colorless solution is formed. Hmm, interesting. Okay, so let us see what part one is saying. To one portion of solution R from above, aqueous sodium hydroxide is added dropwise until in excess. No precipitate was formed. If no precipitate was formed, it simply means that the ammonium ion is suspected. And let us confirm it. Upon heating, a pungent gas evolves, which turns moist red litmus paper to blue. And of course, once you heat it, 
you would confirm the ammonium ion. So ammonium ion is confirmed. So first, so two ways to test for the ammonium ion. It doesn't form any precipitate with sodium hydroxide. And two, when you heat it and you put the litmus paper at the mouth of the test tube, it turns from red to blue, which confirms that ammonia gas is evolved, was evolved, or was produced, or was produced, and it confirmed the ammonia, ammonium ion being present. Okay, so I guess right here we could jot down ammonium, ammonia gas was produced to be consistent. All right. Part two, to another portion of R, a white precipitate is formed, sorry, to another portion of R from above dilute nitric acid followed by silver nitric again. Here's our test for the halides, specifically chloride, bromide, and iodide. They were added dropwise. This is followed by the addition of aqueous ammonia. And so we know that chlorine produce the white PPT so chlorine ion the chloride ion sorry the chloride ion produced the white PPT keep on saying chlorine the chloride ion produced the white PPT so it is present and when it is added when the aqueous ammonia is added to the precipitate it dissolves so we know that the chloride ion is confirmed Okay, the chloride ion leave some space to write the ionic equation. Chloride ion is confirmed. Okay, and so they required an ionic equation, and the equation, of course would be between the silver ion Ag plus aqueous from the silver nitrate plus the chloride ion aqueous to give the PPT silver chloride solid write that properly so that it doesn't look like a G solid there good aqueous and they want you to suggest a possible identity of compound r so here we confirm ammonia down here we confirm chloride so most likely this is ammonium chloride nh4cl slash ammonium chloride ammonium chloride Yep, the dense white fumes. Move on to the next one, January 2010. A student conducts a number of tests on substance X. Some of the observations and inferences are recorded in Table 2. Complete the table to show the remaining observations and inferences made by the student. A small sample of X is gently heated in a dry test tube. Damp red, lit, red, red litmus paper is used to test for any gas. An alkaline gas is produced. So what would be the observation? The observation for this, since an alkaline gas is produced, then the damp litmus paper would change from blue from red to blue so here we would we would have blue litmus paper the red litmus paper change into blue okay so red litmus paper change from change to red change to blue sorry Red litmus paper change to blue and 
a pungent gas. Or a gas evolved with a pungent odor. A gas evolved with pungent odor. Okay. The next part, approximately two centimeters cube of aqueous sodium hydroxide is added to a sample of solid X and warmed. A gas evolved which forms a dense white fumes with hydrogen chloride. So which gas that would form the dense white fume? We know that it is ammonia. So the ammonia gas was produced. And if the ammonia gas was produced, then we know that the ammonium ion is present or suspected. All right. And so the reaction for that would be between the ammonium ion and the hydroxide. So we have the ammonium ion, NH plus, plus the hydroxide ion. Let me write that properly so I cannot get some space. Change the color so that it is distinctive. So you have the ammonium ion, NH plus. We are interested in the hydroxide. Ion plus OH give NH3 gas plus some amount of water liquid. Okay. Let us see if it is balanced. So we have three hydrogen, five hydrogens over here, one oxygen, five hydrogens over here, one oxygen. So it is balanced. So that would be the ionic equation that is required, which produce the gas that evolve, the ammonia gas. The next part, a small amount of solid X is dissolved in about five centimeter cubes of water. To this solution, sodium hydroxide is added gradually until the excess so what would we observe if x contains iron two ions we would definitely expect to see a green a green solution form sorry a green ppt form green ppt First, in dropwise, dropwise, and then in excess, the PPT remain. And so the green PPT remained in excess. So that what that 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 is what we should observe for that part and what would be the ionic equation change the color again let me try use green to represent iron we would expect the fe2 plus ion plus aqueous plus the hydroxide ion so the Fe2 plus plus the hydroxide ion gives Fe hydroxide. Put the two there and it's a PPT so the solid has to be in the bracket. Balance the equation by putting a two here and this is also aqueous. Okay. On to 2010, May, June 2010. 
a student conducts a number of tests on an aqueous solution of compound X. Some of the inferences are and observations made are recorded in table 2. Complete table 2 by filling in the missing observation and inferences. To 1 mil of solution X is added a few copper turnings followed by concentrated nitric sulfuric acid so we know that we are looking for the nitrates because that's the nitrate test one of the nitrate tests brown gas evolved which turns moist litmus paper blue so remember nitrogen dioxide is acidic it's one of the acidic oxide along with carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide so we expect them to turn the blue litmus paper red okay so here we would have the nitrogen dioxide gas was produced and since the nitrogen dioxide gas was produced then we expect the nitrate ion to be present so nitrate ion is suspected or present okay to one mil of solution x is added dilute nitric acid followed by silver nitrate again we are testing for the, the halides here as you can see it is presented here so what should we expect in this case it is iodine so in aqueous so in in in, in the silver nitrate what what the color that we expect is a yellow ppt the observation let me put that in yellow then So a yellow PPT is R. A yellow PPT was observed. Was observed. Right? So that's the first thing was observed. And then after adding the silver nitrate right and then adding the 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 aqueous ammonia the yellow ppt remained the yellow ppt remained after adding aqueous ammonia okay yellow PPT remained all right and of course that confirmed the ions to one mil of solution X is added aqueous lead nitrate solution a bright yellow PPT forms all right um, and if the bright yellow PPT is formed then the iodine the iodide ion is confirmed and the reaction would be between the lead 2 plus plus the iodide ion to give lead iodide PBI2 solid balance the equation with a 2 right here the aqueous okay 